Welcome to New Hampshire's Business. I'm Fred Coker. New Hampshire's electricity landscape is changing significantly as I speak, and one of those changes is having an impact on cost. We'll get to that in a moment with my guests, but first, here is what is generating our electricity in New Hampshire now. Nuclear. Three-fifths of New Hampshire total in-state electricity generation. Natural gas, one-fourth of New Hampshire's total electricity generation. Hydro, biomass, wind, they supply most of the rest of the generation. And then petroleum, coal, and solar supply small amounts. Now, here's a significant change in New Hampshire's electricity landscape that's having an impact on cost. Community power in New Hampshire, uh, a law signed into law in 2019 authorizes municipalities to procure their own power instead of buying it through their local distribution company or utility, but will still be delivered by the utility. Now, we'll show the positive cost impact of this in a moment. With, with me to speak to this kind of structural change in New Hampshire's electricity landscape is the Deputy Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Energy, Christopher Elms. Welcome. Hi, Fred. Nice Thanks to have you here. Me. Nice to have you here. Uh, let me put up on the screen the impact that this community power is having uh, on, as reported recently by the Energy News Network, and have you comment. Uh, and here it is. Um, as of February 1st, residential and small commercial customers in the coalition's 16 member communities will pay a base electricity rate of 8.1 cents per kilowatt hour. That's a 26% reduction from their already competitive rate of 10.9 cents per kilowatt hour. And another 29 communities are planning to enjoy this lower rate after they launch their own programs this spring. Is the Department of Energy involved in this? And what do you think of it? Absolutely. Well, Fred, it's an incredibly exciting development in New Hampshire's energy landscape. Uh, as you mentioned, in 2019, the governor signed a bill, and then in 2021, he worked with Senators Avard, Vo uh, Representative Vos, Senator Bradley, to pass another uh, bill that was focused on community energy opportunity, mm -hmm. and that helped move this forward. Uh, so what this was focused on was towns having local control of their energy mix. Yep. Some towns want to focus on renewable energy, others want to focus on the lowest price. What's great for consumers is that they ha now have options and uh, we're really excited to see how So you develops. work with these communities that are buying their own power? Absolutely. Yeah, so the Department of Energy gets involved in the PUC proceedings and helps work with uh, community power, with towns, with, with citizens as they go through this exciting development. Now the city of Dover launched community power last October, just as one example. And uh, if community power keeps expanding across the state, they say it'll become the second largest electrical supplier in New Hampshire. How does that reshape the electricity marketplace? Uh, yeah, it's a great question, and it's a natural progression of the uh, electric restructuring that New Hampshire and New England has gone through since the, the late 90s. Um, uh, what's really good here is that it's options for consumers, right? There's competition. Competition means better outcomes and lower prices. So um, we're seeing it as a real opportunity for, for people, whether they want to be on community power, whether they want to be on their utility default service, or if they want to find a different competitive supplier to find options that work for them. Are the utilities losing out on this at all? Nope. Uh, so utilities right now, because we split up their delivery of electricity from the supply of electricity right now they're supplying electricity is a pass-through for them they're gonna still be doing what they're good at right De uh, delivering that power it's just another option for consumers about what the electrons that they're gonna buy that come down the wires and on another energy front renewable energy uh, there's a deadline or a statutory requirement ahead as you know New Hampshire's renewable portfolio standard requires that by 2025 the state's electricity providers uh, except for municipal utilities must acquire the equivalent of 25.2 percent of their electricity they sell from renewable energy sources or by purchasing energy credits is New Hampshire going to meet that uh, statutory requirement? Yeah, they sure are. So the renewable portfolio standard uh, really is a requirement that electric suppliers are able to uh, purchase um, renewable energy from one of five different buckets or classes of technologies, or they can make alternative payments that are used to incentivize new technologies. Yeah. However, once we get to 2025, the question is, where do we go from here? Um, you know, some folks want to make sure that we look more like Massachusetts when it comes to subsidizing renewable energy. Um, the thing that they always leave out when talking about Massachusetts is the cost. Right now, Massachusetts ratepayers are paying 50% higher rates than their counterparts here in New Hampshire. In 2021, Massachusetts spent over a billion dollars on their renewable mandates. Uh, we want 
want to focus on the rate payer and see if we can do this smarter. Do we, quickly, do we need more energy in New Hampshire to meet demand? Absolutely. More energy supply means lower prices and more reliability. We're doing what we can to take an all of the above approach to energy to get the electrons that we need for our grid. Christopher Elms, who is Deputy Commissioner of the New Hampshire Department of Energy. Thank you. Thank you. And if you missed part of this briefing, you go to WMUR.com where it will be posted all this week.